Good morning, modern steaders. Any idea what we got last night? Leave it in the comments down below. Before we go any further in the video, don't skip ahead. Don't want to get a wet butt. It's June. Why are you wearing a winter hat? What? It's June. It should be like summertime. No? She's up. Photo hog. Uh huh. Ready? Good, I'll help you. They are pretty, aren't they? Rooster. You like the rooster? Polaris? Yeah, he's pretty. We got our first egg already. Woo -woo. There's an egg, that's awesome. We already got our first egg from them. Better strap them in so we don't lose them. What was that, Olivia? Yeah. The lady we got these chickens from had them just loose in her barn. So we had to go late last night when they were in the roost so she could catch them. So I don't know how they're gonna like being in a chicken tractor, but that's the way we raise our animals here. They'll get more grass, they won't just be in a barnyard, and it might take them a few days to get adjusted to being in a chicken tractor, but we want to get them laying, we're going to start collecting their eggs. Staring at us like, what are you doing to us? What is going on? Okay, yeah, so we got to, got to unlock it. You gotta, gotta go though. Go ahead, pop. It should pop. There we go. So these are purebred Icelandic chicks, and the reason we got this trio is so we can start hatching out some eggs this summer already, and then we can add them to our other flock that we already have. Ready? Yep. See how they like their new home. You know the two hens, the rooster don't want to go. There you go, Polaris. Let them get used to that. So why do you want to rename Polaris's name to Ruffus? Because I'm reading a book at school and it's called Trouble with Lucy 
Trouble what? Trouble for Lucy. Okay. And she, her rooster's name is Rufus. Um, oh, she has a rooster? Uh -huh. Cool beans. And I just feel like Polaris looks like a Rufus. Perfect. Or we name him Rufus. Yeah. Now we gotta think of names for the chickens. Uh huh. Alright. Hey guys. Let's stick that in the corner. Oh, now they got another nice little nesting box for them. I don't know if this piece of plastic is long enough to do anything with, but we're gonna see if we can make a little hot house with it since we had to take our mobile greenhouse and use it as a chicken tractor again. This might actually be long enough to do something with. All right. Boy, do those cattle panels come in so handy. I mean, that's just leftover greenhouse plastic from doing our winter chicken coop and all of our mobile chicken coop. So this is awesome. That'll make a nice little hoop house for, for right now with the weather we've been having. You might think I'm crazy, but I found this to be the best way, cheapest and easiest, that really works to secure plastic the cattle panels. You just need a couple of screws and some junk lumber. I don't think it gets any easier than that. If you have an assistant, it makes it easier. But if your assistant's taking a shower, you can do it by yourself. Simple. Keep it simple. This side is going to be a little bit more technical or fancy with because we're going to want to make sure there's tension on it. I'm liking it. If we had enough plastic, could you hear that? I love the crow of that new rooster. A lot quieter than Mr. Biggs and just a different tone to him altogether. But there's no reason why. If you didn't have to, if you ordered plastic, you couldn't get it to come down all the way enough, secure it to the bottom of your raised bed, and then you could have it come over the sides and come down. Talk about a season extender. Or maybe we do three sides of cu of tomatoes, oh, peppers we got over some there. From it. Yeah, but I don't think each side's gonna take that many. Those are looking nice. Look how greened up those are. Yeah, I just think they just look so much better. Because they were seeing whatever. Yeah. Well, I put um, blood meal on Is it on okay them. to go this close to the edge? Yep. You want them close to the edge, so that way we can trellis them up the trellis. Oh, that's true. Do you want me to go deeper than that? You can go uh, as deep up as up to the first set of leaves if you want. I'm curious to see how the roots are. Like how much they've become rooted already. They got rooted up really fast. They've only been in those pots, what, two weeks? Those are looking nice. Gotta get them in the ground today, hopefully too. It's time to get these plants outside. I might leave the winter squash in for another day. But all these guys, and this need to go out. Let's check on the other seeds we started. Starting to pop up a few of them. Our tamales haven't done anything yet. Ooh. Thinking that's the corn. Those are looking pretty good. I think this is the purple broccoli. Ooh, those are looking nice. Yep. Purple broccoli. I don't think these have done anything. No, not yet. Those are all of our herbs. They usually take a little bit longer. Oh, it's the sun. <laughs> now 
Now this setup right here is dual purpose too. We use it in early spring in the basement and that's what we use for our chick brooder. And then we can bring it out here and we can use it for a hut house. It's a win-win guys, multifunctional. I'm telling you, that's the way to go. We're gonna be jamming with vegetables this year. Once we get all these things planted. We'll let these things stay in here for a few days and we're gonna have to move them out because the other stuff in the basement is gonna be ready. These guys will be hardied off a little bit more. So what we'll do is we'll take these out and we'll stick them over under those hoops and I'll give them a little bit more shelter and hardy them off before we plant them. Hopefully next Sunday we can plant them because next Saturday we're going to Mother Earth News Fair. So if you guys are gonna be there, leave it in the comments down below. We'd love to meet you. I think I feel my glove off. Silly. It's a big one. I was surprised you didn't plant that one. I grabbed what I had right by me. Just made another egg. Awesome, I'll have to go get it in a minute, but look Miss Oregon Trail, you got your own little covered wagon right there. Go get your hat. <sighs> we got our own little covered wagon, Whoa. look. <laughs> 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 yeah, woohoo! Right Libby's? Uh-huh. You lost your hat, we were going so fast. No. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it's right there. Hey, I don't know what that thing's for. Okay, come on. Here's what it looks like after our hard work this weekend. Gina got the tomatoes planted, five per cattle panel per side. And then she planted our bell peppers. I'm thinking either the carrots or the beets for this bed. 
We're almost done. We want to put two more raised beds in. We're going to do a four footer here. And then we're going to do another four foot by four foot bed over there. I don't know what we're going to plant in that one yet. Maybe strawberries or garlic come November. We don't have any garlic here. We'd love to plant some garlic. So if you guys have any good suggestions on different varieties for garlic to plant in a northern region, leave it in the comments below. But this is looking pretty nice. We're happy with it so far. We hope you liked today's video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it. It's really been helping. You've been making our channel grow immensely in the last 30 days or so. We just want to thank you for that. We're over 5,000 subscribers. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be we wouldn't be where we are right now. If you guys are going to the Mother Earth News Fair June 10th, leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to go check out the Homegrown Food Summit. There's going to be 38 speakers talking about growing your own food and all your own herbs, medicinal herbs. It's awesome educational information, guys. Go check it out. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Mm -hmm.